Hi and welcome to another electrostatics lesson. We're looking at some examples and here comes another example from a past paper. So in this one they tell us that we have a, um, a the diagram shows two small identical metal spheres R and S each placed on a wooden stand. Spheres R and S carry charges of positive 8 is R and negative 4 is S and uh, uh, micro Coulombs, respectively. Ignore the effects of air. Okay. Uh, explain why the sphere were placed on wooden stands. Well, um, it is important to know that if something um, is not conductive of electricity, then it cannot allow for electrons to pass from one object to another object. Which means it's it, uh, if something is not uh, conductive, it cannot contain a charge. So for example, wood, and wood cannot contain a charge, so the reason why we would put it on a wooden stand is to ensure it's, it's a way of isolating the, um, the metal sphere from another object that might contain a charge. Now if it was connected or if, if it touches another object that contains a charge, then obviously there will be an exchange of electrons to get the average charge on both of them and so um, that's maybe a long answer but here it is just to ice uh, the answer here would just be to isolate it uh, from the surface that might contain a charge metal sphere R and S are brought into contact for a while and then separated by a small distance so these two have opposite charges um, and so now they touched they um, they're in contact for a little while and then they're separated a small distance. Calculate the net charge on each of the spheres. So you will recall that when we have charges and if we have objects that are that touch, then the resultant charge on each of them would be the average of the two charges. So in other words, the charge on the new charge, the final charge on R is equal to the final charge on S is equal to the average of the initial the initial charges. Okay. So we add the two charges together R and S and then just divide by 2. So initially we had positive 8 and negative 4 when added together, divided by 2, 8 minus 4 is equal to 4 divided by 2. So, and this is positive. So the final charge and the average charge on the 2 would be 2 micro coulomb. It's not necessary to change the micro coulomb in this case to a, um, a 10 to the power of negative 6 because um, it doesn't make any difference in the final answer. The final answer will just anyway be 2 times 10 to the power of ne negative 6. So both of them will have a positive charge. Draw the electric field pattern due to the two spheres R and S. Now this is after they've been in contact with one another. So we'll draw R and S. So here they are. R and S now these two have the same charge exactly the same charge on them um, I'm I'm actually more interested to draw the uh, the original charge it seems more fun to draw, draw that charge so let me do both okay so I'm first going to draw the electric field patterns before they were separated so before they were separated okay Notice that R had a large positive charge. So any positive um, object, for example, um, and yes, any any positive object will have a um, uh, an, a repulsive force. Will experience a repulsive force by R. So if I put a dot here, okay, a positive charge here, he will have really a strong force in that direction, experiencing a strong force in that direction, and then a fairly, uh, about half the force in this direction. So notice the distance between the two is halfway, and this one has half the charge. So it would have roughly half the, um, 
the attractive force by S which is now negatively charged. So in other words an object that's here will, will tend instead of going like in this direction he would tend to go still a little bit more in that direction before he gets pulled up. And the only reason why I say that is so that we can get roughly an idea of what the um, what it will do. It will have a strong push away from R and then towards towards here. Yeah. Okay, that was not too bad. But they must come in at 90 degrees. There we go. And then here in the middle we'll just have a straight a straight line. Okay, so notice it's not it's not necessarily Well, it's definitely not um, uh, in the middle symmetric. Well, if they had the same charges, the lines would look s uh, symmetric except for the for the distance. So, um, a value here would not just go up. Usually, it will just do that, okay? But now it will do this. Let's say it goes directly away and then directly towards. There we go, directly away and then towards. Here on the opposite ends, this one will just push it away and this one will just pull it in. Okay, and then there will be some charges here which just does this. It doesn't have enough attractive force by this one to get there. Okay, this one. Away towards okay, directly away towards it's not a hundred percent correct, and then there might be another line coming in here. Okay, something like that. This would be the original charges. It's not what they asked, but I really enjoy drawing these lines so. I just drew those uh, for free. You don't have to pay anything to get that one. Okay, so let's look at the other. The, the, the question they actually asked was now afterwards. After we've brought them into contact, now these two have the same charges. Okay, now if they have the same charge, then obviously we, we know that a positive a, a point, so I just usually take a point here, this point would be pushed away by by both of them and it would be pushed away with the same uh, force so so here in the middle line we know that no no electric field will cross this middle line both of them are positively charged and therefore both with, of them will repel anything here in the middle will also experience no force because well it will experience a, f a force and just be pushed to the center and there it will stand still okay so we won't have any lines here but we will have as as we get here we will have lines being being pushed up like that and then we have lines coming here and then the other sphere starts acting on it and pushes it up. Lines here, other spheres, there we go. So it will go, first of all, and, and the way I'm, it makes it easy for me is I just go, go from here, kind of a 90 degree line I started and then I just allow the other one to affect it. And so here, and just the further away I am from this one, I just make that effect less. So that one was a little bit too much. Just a little bit of an effect there. And then here, a 90 degree angle there, and then a little bit of effect. And here there's no effect. Okay, so once again, notice I'm going, I'm making a 90 degree angle with my circle while I'm trying to, and then then I just cause a little bit of an effect by the other one. Here I do a 90 degree angle and then the effect is slightly more. Okay, here I do 90 degree but now my effect must be quite a lot so that I don't touch that line. Here leaving at 90 degrees and a little bit of an effect. Okay, here I'm leaving at 90 degrees and then I must 
effect quite a lot so that I don't touch that line. Here leaving at 90 degrees and I shouldn't touch that line. Here leaving at 90 degrees and a little bit of an effect. Here leaving at 90 degrees and a very slight effect. Here I'm just leaving at 90 degrees because it's in the same direction. Okay, so let me do the rest quickly without wasting too much of your time. And then here we're leaving at 90 degrees and uh, quite a good effect. So it's not perfect, it's definitely, it, it, in reality it won't look as uh, exactly like this, but I do think this is a very good representation of this second part, drawing the electric field pattern due to the two spheres R and S. So again, very important, the direction of your lines is also important. So thank you for watching this. There's another, this question has another part to it, but I'll do that in, in the next video. I'll see you there.